first of all, any child that is brought into this world did not ask to be brought into this world. You and your partner, if you are married, are two consenting adults that decided to have children. Now these children have come into your lives. You are stewards and you are meant to watch over these children and guard them and guide them in life till they are old enough to be independent of you. Me, no matter what I know about someone's spouse, hmm? huh. as far as there are children involved, hmm? in the interest of those children, because I've come to realize that children are better off having father and mother present in their lives than being from a single parent home where they keep asking themselves, why did daddy reject me? Or why did mommy leave me here? Okay. I'd rather that child deals with the trauma of mommy and daddy are always quarreling. Mommy and mm. daddy, are, I'd rather, rather, I'd rather deal, that child deals with that trauma and say at the end of the day, ah, Kai, in spite of all mommy was going through, in spite of all mommy so, or experienced, mommy stuck it out because of me. Mommy sacrificed because of me. Mommy stayed because of me. Because mommy knew that if she leaves the equation, probably I wouldn't have the life I deserve as a child of that family. Because mommy knows that if she leaves the equation, most probably she will not have custody of me and she will be forced to leave me here. And mommy knows that there's a very strong possibility that I will not get what I would am meant to get as a child of that father. I'd rather at the end of that child's, when the child is much older and mature enough to appreciate what was happening in his growth or her growth years, she looks back in retrospect, adding all the dots, adding all she saw or he saw growing up and realizes that both on the father's part and on the mother's part, they saw the bigger picture. They looked beyond their selfish, private, personal wants and desires and considered these innocent children that they brought into the equation who didn't ask to be brought into the equation. They have a responsibility to those children and they must stick it out. And me, I will not be the friend or sister or in-law that knows something or has some information. Okay, so what you're saying is that no matter, okay, what you're saying is that being in a two-parent household where the environment is hostile between the parents, that no matter that the parents are having a toxic relationship. Those children deserve to have their two parents bring them up so that they're not faced with a single parent family because you said it will be a problem for the kids. And that's what brought us to come to talk about this. Isn't it, Onya? Am I getting it? Wrong? I strongly believe that the problem of society today is fatherless homes. One of the problems. Are really? One of really? the problems of society. I think um, one of the major problems is the fathers are absent. I think okay. there's I think there's a stability. Um I think there's a role. There's a role the... for both parents. There's a role <laughs> for both parents. I don't know. Okay, so now we're scatting scut and we've been scatting around this. So I'm going to go down to it now. So even when we're well, you did not agree family, with me just now. No, no, yeah, I didn't. You said, said you said one of the, the problems the problem. of society is um, 
the, fatherless. The, I didn't the, quite the, agree with you. No, nah. not not really. No, I just I'm just saying I didn't agree with her fully. Fully, yeah, of course, of course, there is, the, the the father has a role, of course. Um, but I don't know. Your your statement now makes many inferences. And how how do you mean a father being present? Do you know that a father can live in the same house and still be absent? Good. That's what I want. Do you know? I know, mm -hmm. that, I know that there are parents, the fathers that are physically living there, but are not are emotionally unavailable. Yeah, and okay, that's okay. So that's... so does does your statement that um fatherless homes now um now now would it now mean would it statistics, now infer that children statistics have shown that most children who do not complete tasks, most children that do not go through with school or what they're given as their task or responsibilities stem from homes where there are no fathers. Statistics have shown that most children who get incarcerated, especially men, stem from single mother homes. And statistics have shown that sometimes the, both parents are there, but because, and which is why I wanted us to do that topic, where a woman is in charge in a home. Both parents are there. Sometimes, because that man isn't playing his role, the children are seeing it. They have no leader to follow. They are seeing a mismatch in that family. The woman is the one running that family. That is a mental problem for children. So sometimes, having those two people there can even create more issues than having the one person. So, it's, so we need to not be making those blanket statements that a two-parent family is good for the child. It's only good for the child when it's a two parents, a healthy two parent family. Okay, yes. I have a phrase. Mm -hmm. so, the bedrock of every society is the family unit. If something goes wrong in each family unit, add up. Well, you need to be promoting that. You don't know that you're promoting that when you are making a lot of noise about. The, parent, the family, the parents must stay together because the family unit is that important. You are giving, you are arming people with a weapon when they haven't thought it through. Because we are online in the, in the space where people can hear us, you are going to encourage people and you actually actively seemed to have, to have been doing that in what you were saying before. That um, because they, they are seeing, you are actually said that the children are seeing that mommy they're having this problem, but mommy is staying because of me. I don't know if I told you in one of our conversations about how somebody called the mother and the mother was crying because she said to the mother, the mother stayed through the marriage, an abusive marriage, a toxic environment. The mother stayed through. And because the mother stayed through, this girl stayed up until about the 20th year of her marriage, which had become abusive right in the early years. And she was now looking at her life. And she called the mother and was telling the mother, because I saw you do that and I felt I was doing the same thing, the right thing for my kids, my life has now gone before me. So I don't think that we should be promoting that kind of, let me even make myself, I don't think that we should be promoting that kind of narrative where we encourage people to stay because of the sake of the children, even when the environment is hostile and, and toxic. Because what we are doing is every time that you have a child in an environment. Their ideas about life and about relationships are formed by their observations. So you teach the children that what they are seeing is acceptable and it's doable. So that even somebody who begins to think, I don't want to live like this, starts to question themselves, am I making the right choice? No, I am not making the right choice. I had better stay because people say that it too, parent family is better. Sometimes people don't want to marry people who, whose parents were divorced because they say, oh, that person is from a divorced home. If you go away after this discussion, I want you to think about it and tell us if you speak differently from the way you're speaking about this now, from the way you spoke about it five minutes ago. Uh, in as much as I am not an advocate for remaining in toxicity, or in a toxic environment, I just feel there's nothing that cannot be worked out. You feel there's nothing that can't be worked out? There are some things that can clearly not be worked out. 
And when you make a statement like that, you mm. make people who even see themselves in a situation where they know this can be worked out. Yes, there's everything that can be worked out. There's some things that can be worked out. We have to go back to the foundation. Like when we talked about Prince Charles and Lady Diana, that thing was dead before it started. Some things are dead before they started. A man who has gone, you were with us when we talked about this on a general panel, a man who took a virgin Christian girl, knowing that his intention was to get a good wife. Some people re recognize this is a girl who is inexposed. This is a girl who doesn't know this and that. She's my target. I'm going to marry her as a wife. Keep her in the home because I know now I can do whatever I want. Okay. okay, so tying into what Ajiri said, honestly, like we've agreed here before, there are no black and white answers. Um, I don't believe that staying is necessarily better for the children. I don't believe that. Sometimes yeah, yeah, but, 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 but there are circumstances sometimes staying might be better for the children than, than living, especially if, if you know that living it's going to um, change their life so drastically um, negatively. Again, depending on what it is that staying means, honestly, these are individual decisions. You, you make up your mind what staying would mean for you because you matter. You know, we keep saying children, children. What, what, what about the woman? She's a human being as she well. She's somebody's child. She's also somebody's yeah, you, child. She's a human being as well. She has her own soul. So, but honestly, I'm not, I don't like giving blanket answers and I don't necessarily believe that staying is better. Uh, but I just think if you weigh, if you, if you weigh what happens between living and staying, and then you can make up your mind. Why people stay is because they cannot afford to give the children the standard of living that they're used to and all that and all that. that. That's the reason. That's the most common reason that I have heard. But if if living will bring sanity and peace and all that, I do not believe that um, it, 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 the children will, will be worse off than, than being in a toxic environment. Nah. I yeah, that and this is my well. opinion. I don't believe that. I don't. It's those narratives that create this thing, right? And where the problem is, is it, sometimes the woman is actually capable. She's capable of taking care of this room alone by herself. But that is not enough reason to leave um, and take those children and go and have them in a single parent home. What of what most important is the well-being of both even that mother and the children. Because sometimes when you talk about, like when you said, when you talk about the children, 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 the, the woman who is not in a, a good and positive mental state with a man who is also obviously definitely not in a good and positive mental state because of the problems that she has with his spouse are not giving the right conducive environment and training and not bringing to those children. And this is a this is a fact. So what we need to do is instead of keeping doing those blanket things of generally they say it's for the children because there was a woman I was even talking to her that she said it's because of the children because it was some crazy things that she was saying and she said because of the children because of the children you brought an insane person mm -hmm. somebody who is actually mad who had done certain things because of children you opened the door for him. Even the children were saying, mommy, why did you? So it's it's a little bit of mental laziness on our part to take a general thing that people do for they say we should live for the children's sanity. So I'm going to become a single parent because I want my children to feel okay. Or we should stay because of the children. So we are going to. We have to see, we cannot escape. You see, we have we have a society where we rely a lot on church teachings and societal sayings and these are the issues as my sister likes to say these are the issues instead of us to think of the individual situation i want to implore us to do that if i have a situation in my family i need to take the time to think of what's happening what is going to give the best results and i believe that we all know it when it's happening to us the only thing is that maybe we don't have the strength to, to have that resolve, to actually do what we need to do. We, all, we actually know in this situation, I should do this. But there is something that I feel is too big for me to surmount, to overcome. And so because of that, I lie, lie to myself that it's okay for the children. I think we know when we're lying. Like the lady who was asking us whether she should go ahead and marry the guy who smokes and drinks and sleeps at the back. We know when we're lying to ourselves. We need to grow up. We need to grow up. 
And if I find out, that's why at the end of the day, it comes back to me. But I know that at the end of the day, each and every one of us, we have weaknesses and strengths. And sometimes we like to pretend that our weaknesses are not our weaknesses, overlook them and take the decision that we know we shouldn't take because we're not, we don't feel up to. Somebody's going to hear me saying this and maybe start crying <laughs> because the truth is hitting home. It's the truth. We don't want to take responsibility because we want to sit back and wait for God to punish the person or wait for God to solve it when we can. When we can say, no, I'm not going ahead because he smokes and drinks and stays at the bar, we'll say, no, I'll take care of him. I will bring him to Christ. We'll give ourselves all sorts of reasons. When are we going to grow up? You teach a child to live in a toxic environment, you, you are traumatizing the child. The child's childhood is all soaked in, enmeshed in this. They wish that they were living with their friends in their friends' homes. It's traumatic for them. You steal their childhood from them. If you don't know, that's part, part of what you're doing. And these children will grow up feeling like the world is a harsh place. Because you cannot be there for your, for your child when you are spending all your time worried about the things that are going on with you and your partner. You can't. So you don't give that child the proper attention. Sometimes you even lash out at them. Sometimes, but they are observing it. You think they don't know? They know. Then I will now go out as a child. I come out and I am suspicious of life. Or I have a partner who behaves in a certain way. And instead of me to cut it off from the beginning, I accept it because it's not as bad as mommy and daddy's own. And before you know what's happening, the person continues to do it. This is how we, we train ourselves to accept what is filled in our society. Our society is full of people who, before they get married, while they are having the relationship, misbehavior has started. What do we do when they come to me? They will come to Ajiri, they will come to Oninye, we will say, Why don't you just do this? Why don't you just do this? Instead of breaking up the relationship, we want to teach them, normalize, let us make it work. Why must you make it work? If already we are teaching to make it work while it's, it's not a marriage, why shouldn't I now when it's, mar it's a marriage? <laughs> why do we always feel like I meet the person and we must be gummed together? It's very bad training. You teach people to be making sense of nonsense. Once you see that it's nonsense, you cut it off. Let the person go and think about it and think about their nonsense and come back and behave properly. But once you're giving little leeway, little leeway, no, why must you? Do you think that God who made you, the God that you're always calling, do you think that God wants you to be doing that to yourself? I think not. And each individual marriage has its own individual character. Each individual marriage takes on its own individual personality. Each marriage has different people, a man and a woman, with different personalities and different characters in it. Now, um, you who is in the marriage knows what you can take and knows what you can tolerate and you know what is best for you. Um, that being said, in as much as you are thinking of the bigger picture and of your children's security and your children's emotional stability and psychological stability in as much as you're considering that and it should be very very much considered um each marriage as i said has its own characteristics so i'm not going to stand here and make one big banner and say stay there no matter what you know if you look and you think it can be solved or we can walk around mm. it. Um, we can um, come to a consensus or we can come to the place where we're able to continue to live together as husband and wife. All good. If your marriage has gotten to the point and mark my words, each individual marriage involved, every marriage is different. Every single marriage is different. No two marriages are the same. That's why you cannot sit down and make one blank statement. Now, each person should decide for themselves what they can take and what is a no-go. Each person should decide for themselves what boundaries will not be crossed. When you've made that decision, do what you have to do.
Thank you. Um, it's nice. they are not blanket statements. It's individual. Forget social media. So, so sometimes you, you might have to forget the church. I'm sorry. They look at it critically and, and do what works for you. Really, do what works for you. So it may not be to leave, and it may not what, be to what stay. What works for you may be stupid. Do what makes sense. Find sense and do. What yeah, makes yeah, sense. yeah. Okay. And do what makes sense and works. Do do what is best. Mm -hmm. and then, right. And then so note whatever decision you take. Mm -hmm. Own it, yes, own that's it. exactly own it. Yours, yeah, it's your own decision, it. yeah, your decision, your decision. Own I agree, yeah. Don't ever make any decision and then later on say, This person made me, made no. me, yeah. Take full responsibility for the decision you make. I do think that this conversation will clear up some things for some of us because till tomorrow, I keep hearing I did it because of the children, whereas last week, those children were asking their mother about mommy, why. Mommy, you betrayed us. And that's the sad reality of it. Because they are human beings. They have a brain. You need to take up account take accountability and stop saying because other people say. Take accountability. Nobody knows your own peculiar situation. I can sit here and think that your marriage should break up, right? But you know that it shouldn't because you know better. I don't know what's happening inside there. I can sit here and feel that you should stay together. And you decide to stay together because I thought that. Whereas you're supposed to be the one to know. You know what makes sense for yourself, for the other partner, and for the children. And while we're at it, let me say, let's not take decisions based on bitterness for the other people. We should always be fair and just. Even if you're fighting with someone, take the right decision because the results are going to come out tomorrow. We are so busy all the time. And so with that, we close this episode. I think it was very deep and very enlightening. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. And all right, bye. bye. Let's have your comments in the comment section.